Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. We continue to preview the 2021 college football season, and today we get to visit with the Dakota Wesleyan football coach, Ross Simple, in his 10th season at the helm at Dakota Wesleyan. Coach, just bringing into this season, I know that uh, you had a number of recruits, 39 recruits, and, and pretty balanced, actually, 19 and 20 offense and defense. So when you're looking at the the needs that you're trying to address, it uh, looked like you were just, well, taking care of both sides of the ball. I, I wanted to ask you about that and and then to ask you also, you know, when, when you're recruiting with a lot of players not getting to get that 2020 season in, uh, how difficult is it to, to look back and see what they've done for 2019 and then project ahead to 21? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, just starting with our recruiting class overall, uh, first of all, I appreciate you having me on and, and give me a chance to talk about our team and, and um, you know, having somewhat of a, or hopefully somewhat of a normal season. Um, <laughs> it's exciting to to get back. I mean, if, if we were dealing with the same things at this time, this year that we were last year, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation because I wouldn't have any information because I wouldn't know anything. And so <laughs> um, it's, it's nice to have a little bit uh, more concrete plan and refer back to some of the things. Hey, this is how we want to do this. Um, and so leading into our, our recruiting class, you know, we were pretty balanced and, um, you know, overall we had, uh, uh, you know, we only graduated, uh, six seniors last year. And so we had a, a big team coming back, uh, that we really, really liked. Um, and so really it was more about, um, a focus for us was probably more so, uh, on the offense and defensive lines. Um, I thought we did really, really well. Um, on the offense and defensive lines, I think we we added eight different D linemen, um, able to add ten offensive linemen. So you know you talk about a pretty even split, and and uh, you know overall in the class, and and right there it starts with those big guys. And so we were really pleased with those uh, big guys that we were able to add to our roster. Um, you know, adding uh, some skill positions, uh, big guys and skill positions are probably the the hardest to recruit, uh, just because everybody needs those guys and. Um, they aren't dime a dozen, not that, not that any recruit really is, but, um, you know, uh, you got to find those guys that kind of fit your scheme and fit your system. And, um, you know, in South Dakota specifically, there's, I think 11 or 12 football playing schools that, um, you know, not a lot of population and uh, a lot of schools that are looking for those bodies. And so we were really pleased with the amount of kids that we had and, and just the overall talent. Um, you know, Nebraska was really good to us and, and coach Foster, our defensive coordinator recruits down there and just did a phenomenal job. I thought we got some great kids out of South Dakota, uh, got into Minnesota a little bit, and then, you know, had a few guys kind of out of that, uh, you know, Midwest, um, you know, four or five hour range away in, in Missouri, uh, got a few kids out of Missouri and, and that's been really good to us lately. And, uh, so yeah, really pleased with our class and, um, you know, there's some guys in that, uh, you know, defensive recruiting class that I think we're going to be able to, you know, get into some rotational things. And, and obviously we'll talk about our team, but we have a lot of our defensive starters back. So, you know, those young guys on defense, they got, a, you know, some great guys to learn from and, um, you know, maybe get a chance to rotate in a little bit and, and, you know, take things in pieces uh, offensively, you know, we're probably going to look at some of those young guys to come in and, and maybe have a bigger role right away. And so um, it's exciting to see the dynamics there and, and uh, what those guys can do and, and just overall um, seeing how they make an impact in our program. You know, you talk about players maybe with an opportunity right off the bat to, to, to be a part of that offense uh, and, and offense with players coming back, including some young players as well. Jamin Aaron, one of those players coming back, your leading uh, player on the field statistically, more than 500 yards rushing. Uh, what do you look at then from some of those returnees uh, on the offensive side? Yeah, uh, you know, we talked about young guys offensively making an impact, and, and really that's what our offense is right now. And, you know, you can define just about every guy as a, a young guy coming back, <laughs> uh, especially at the end of the season. Um, you know, Daniel Leibolt is a receiver for us. That'll go, he'll be in his senior year um, that didn't play the last half of the season. Jacob Oxos um, is another junior receiver that didn't play the last few games of the season with an injury. And so we had a lot of young guys. We started three offensive freshman offensive lineman in our last game against Concordia. Um, and then, you know, Jamin, you know, the interesting thing about Jamin, um, you know, he's, he redshirted his very first year and because last year didn't count in terms of eligibility, he's technically by, you know, just those 
parameters, he's going into his first year of college football <laughs> and, he, and it's his third season on campus, you know? And so there's some of those anomaly things that are going on at, on, on our team and, and other teams, obviously. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of joke with them uh, about, hey, you know, we're going to have to figure out a couple different majors uh, for you to, after you get your first major done, to, to finish out your four years of eligibility here. And, uh, you know, if we can talk him into that, we'd be in a good spot because Jamie is a good player. Um, really came on at the end of last season, um, you know, and, and uh, putting up some big yardage, be, you know, being a, a real reliable guy for us. You know, we talked about some of those freshmen offensive linemen and, and Parker Grote, John was a, he's in the same boat. You know, he redshirted his first year, played as a redshirt freshman last year. And um, now he's going into his first season because, you know, last year didn't count in terms of eligibility. And so um, our receiver group is a young group. Um, I mentioned Daniel Leibolt and Jacob Oxos already. Uh, some of those older guys that are in that boat for us, um, you know, but uh, a bunch of freshman guys that have played for us. Um, Garrett Dieterman, um, you know, Logan Furbox, another young guy on a returning list that we, we feel good about. Gavin Spurl, Tate Larson, um, you know, Preston Nedved. Uh, those guys all played a little bit last year, and so their roles are going to have to increase. You know, the big question that we're going to get this season on offense is who's going to play quarterback? Uh, we, you know, one of our six seniors was Zach Lester, our starting quarterback. Um, we have three returning players at that spot right now, and Keel Nelson, uh, Jimmy Garwall, and Austin Lee. Uh, Keel has started games for us at quarterback, um, you know, a couple seasons ago as a true freshman. And so he's probably got the most experience out of all those guys. But, um, you know, really a, a battle and, and two freshman guys coming in as well. Um, you know, so we're going to have a good quarterback group that, um, you know, guys are going to have to compete and guys are going to have to be, you know, making good decisions to put our offense in the best position uh, to be successful. And so, you know, we have a lot of sorting out to do. I, I guess that's the best way to describe our offense. You know, we've added some really, really good new players. Uh, we've got some really, really good young guys that are coming back. And so the sorting out process is on us as coaches um, and, and really players to see who's going to separate themselves, um, you know, going into fall camp and as fall camp, uh, you know, progresses. We're speaking now with Coach Ross Simple from Dakota Wesleyan here on Midwest Sports Net and previewing the college football season for 2021. Coach Simple in his 10th season with the program, a part of national championship teams on the field as a player as well as on the sidelines as a coach. And you were talking about uh, Aaron and how he came along near the end of the year, of course, being called on a little bit more. You can see that in his numbers, a few more carries, more yards, and and really stepped it up. Uh, there were, you look at the other side of the ball, too, on the defense – and it was a defense that hit a point in the season where it really just stepped things up as well, kind of locked down and helped you to close out the season strong, three consecutive wins to end the 2020 season. Can you talk about the defense? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, a little backstory here. Um, you know, last year towards the end of the season, um, you know, COVID kind of hit our, our coaching staff a little bit. And so um, I've, I was the defensive coordinator um, every year I've been here and, and had to make a transition to, to try to help out on offense just um, in more of a, a supplementary role just because we had some coaches that were out. And, you know, really a lot of our success defensively in those last couple of games was probably because I wasn't calling the defense and, and Coach <laughs> Foster um, took over. And so he deserves a lot of that credit. And, um, you know, they did. They, they, they really played well. Um, you know, even before that, the last three games that we were, we were able to win, we played Morningside before that. And, uh, you know, defensively, those guys played well in that game, um, really well, created some turnovers. And I think that was kind of the, the, the coming out party, if you will. I mean, there's still a lot of work to do. Don't get me wrong, but, um, you know, being able to, uh, make some plays and do some nice things, um, at times, uh, against a very, very good team in Morningside, I think kind of, you know, maybe triggered a little bit for those guys to say, Hey, you know, we can, we can step up our game. We got more in there, and, and Coach Foster did a great job of getting that out of those guys and, and highlighting, you know, what they were able to do. And, you know, we've just talked about our offense and, you know, the sorting out process that we're going to go through on offense. You know, our defense is, is literally the exact opposite. You know, we have uh, 10 of our 11 starters uh, coming back defensively. Um, you know, and I know coaches always say competition and whatever, but, you know, there's some guys that, are, that play pretty high-level football um, defensively for us, and, and those guys we're going to count on quite a bit. Um, we really like some of our new young players coming in, uh, but we've told them, you know, your role is probably going to be a little bit smaller to start, especially defensively. But, 
you know, we still want those guys to be able to rotate in and, and um, you know, be in a position where they can maybe be on the field with some experienced guys and, and take some pressure off them. Hey, just do what you need to do. Uh, we got some of these other guys out here that are going to help you through, you know, maybe some of the mental things or the alignment things. And so, um, you know, our, our, our defense really runs through our linebacker group. Uh, we'll have four senior linebackers all coming back and, and Cody Reichelt, Sam Kretschmar, Josh Gary, Jacob Schaefer, um, those four guys ended the season starting for us. Max Schoenfelder is another guy, kind of our, our Swiss Army knife. He played just about every position we had. I think he started games at just about every position because of injury or whatever else. And so um, another great guy on our, our roster that we really like to have. And Jaden Walton was a, one of those freshmen last year that uh, came in and had some spot duty uh, rotation type of things. And so um, excited about that. And our, our DB group, you know, really bringing everybody back, um, you know, Nate Ruprecht and Jacob Zamora. Jacob Zamora was a second team all conference uh, corner for us. Um, another guy that we're excited about at corner is Hunter Cordell um, back on our roster. He started every game as a true freshman two seasons ago um, at corner for us. And, and he's back with us. And so adding some depth at that corner spot is something that we're really excited about. And, you know, at the safety spot, Adam DeYoung and Hayden Schmidt, um, you know, have, have some experience starting and, you know, Dominic Warmbine at the nose position had a great, I mean, just, you want to talk about a guy defensively that made a difference in the last half of the season. That was Dominic Warmbine. I mean, an absolute force uh, at the nose position and in a three, four defense, you know, the nose position can get a lot of attention just, yeah. you know, based on alignment and, and Dom was, was unbelievable pressure on the quarterback. Uh, I think he had four sacks just in the last maybe three or four games. Um, and so a guy that we're really going to count on a defensive line as well to, to kind of keep us going in the right direction. And, you know, coach, I, I realize that carryover doesn't always work uh, from one year to the next, but, but from the defensive side, especially if, if you can get some carryover from what uh, that unit did near the end of the year, heading into the first part of this season, it would be fantastic for you. And, and speaking of that, then we look at the schedule right now, before you get into the, the bulk of a very tough GPAC conference schedule, which has has been that way for many years now. Uh, you open the season August 28th to an out of conference opponent in Dakota State coming into to Mitchell. That should be a, a very good and uh, very competitive game there to get things started in late August. And then you go on the road, then first time you're going to go to Mount Marty, which uh, according to news today, just breaking today, Coach Mike Woodley, who was going to lead that program into its first season this year, and you all were going to be there for the first game, still are going to be there for the first game. Coach Woodley resigning, citing personal reasons there. John Micheletti taking over as the head coach at Mount Marty. So we might be breaking some news for someone right now. Anyway, can you talk about the opening of your schedule and, and what that looks like? Yeah, we we uh, I'm not, I'm not a big um, look at the schedule and talk to players about it, um, with the exception of this year. And and the reason for that is we have what I would consider two unbelievably huge games to start out this season. And you know, obviously Dakota State has been a tremendous rivalry game for us. Um, whether that game is in Madison or Mitchell, uh, both of those teams travel extremely well. They support their players and teams extremely well. Um, you know, it's a game that we've been able to play on, on one of the local TV stations, um, you know, for the last few years. I mean, it's a tremendous atmosphere for, for that game to be played in. And, and so to be able to have that game at home, uh, a night game, um, just the, the dynamics that go into that game and, and the excitement, you know, starting the season is already exciting. And then, you know, you're going to have a tremendous crowd, a tremendous following, um, and it's going to be a dogfight. It has been. You know, last the last time we played, it was a double overtime game. And uh, if you expect anything different in that game, um, you're, you're probably wrong, you know. And, <laughs> and um, so just being able to have that uh, on the schedule again, not being able to play that game last season, um, you know, I think it's a, a game that both sides of the ball look forward to. Um, I think uh, it's, it's one of the toughest, most physical games uh, for us over the season. Um, which says something, you know, because we play in a pretty physical league and, um, you know, you just get the best out of both teams in that game. And, and uh, we get to start the season that way at home. And, and so that's a tremendous opportunity for our guys and, and our team. And then, you know, you mentioned Mount Marty and, um, you know, Coach Woodley and, and what he's built there and now uh, being passed on uh, to the next coach and, and 
we're, we're making history in that game. They're making history. And, uh, you know, the picture after that game is going to be hung up in their archives forever, you know? And, and, um, so we get a chance and obviously Yankton's a tremendous town and, and they support their programs extremely well. I know Mount Marty and DWU have a tremendous rivalry in basketball. Um, you know, there isn't a rivalry in football yet because they haven't had a chance to play each other, but, uh, <laughs> we're going to have that chance. And, and their first official game is at their place and rightfully so. Um, uh, but you know, they're, they're, they're hosting us and, to be just a part of that, you know, if you just left it at that, the first game ever that a program is going to play and we get to be a part of that, that makes it a huge deal. And then now you make it a, you know, another, you know, what you'd like to be a rivalry type game, uh, you know, an in-state rival, much like Dakota State. Uh, you know, I mean, you look at those two games, I mean, the storylines are incredible in my mind in, in both of those games. And, and obviously Mount Marty has been chomping at the bit to, to get to that point and they're going to be ready. Um, I don't think they're going to look like a first year team. Um, you know, they're going to have some quality, quality kids and quality coaches that have been working extremely hard uh, to get their kids ready to play their first game. They're representing all kinds of things in that game. And, um, you know, again, we get to be a part of that. Um, but for us to underestimate or assume that they're, you know, not going to have everything ready to go is going to be a mistake on our end. And, and we just can't afford to let that happen. We're, we're going to have to play our best game. And, and, um, you know, again, we travel really well. Uh, Yankton is going to support their kids and, and another huge atmosphere, uh, to start out the season. It should be a fun one coach. And, and I, for one, and as, as you mentioned earlier, I'm ready, I'm ready to be out there and, and watching the competition here in 2021. So we're looking forward to that. August 28th in Mitchell, first game for the Dakota Wesleyan Tigers for the 2021 season. Coach Ross Simple, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit and previewing your season. Success to you and to the Tigers this year as you get things going. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me and letting me talk about our team. And uh, if you're ever at a game, let us know. We'll, we'll get you in and uh, check <laughs> us out. I plan on it. Thank you, Coach.